BBC Radio Leicester, 13 minutes past three on a Friday, not just any Friday, but the Friday before the bank holiday. Now, my guest this afternoon knew by instinct that art was her soul and love in life. And next week, the Leicester-born artist and sculptress, Barley Sanger Jenkins, will open her first solo exhibition at the New Walk Museum and Art Gallery, and it's inspired by classical music, and she joins us in the studio now. Um, it's lovely to meet you. And lovely to meet you too. You've ben. brought in a great selection of some of your artwork, um, so we can sort of talk about it with your art in between us, if you like. But let's just go back to, you know, my, my children, for example, love drawing. My youngest boy particularly just draws and draws and draws and draws. But how did you know from an early age that that was what made you tick? Okay, when I look back, I think it must have been um, all to do with my mother. Because ever since I was young, my mum used to sit me in front of a TV programme with this lady on the TV painting in oils on a canvas. Don't know the name of the programme. It was probably was BBC. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I used to watch every day. And my mum used to just make us watch it, make us watch it. And, um, and that was it. And I think watching this woman do it, I started to use crayons, do a bit of doodling asking my mum I want to have paint sets, I want to start doing the same thing. So I was actually mimicking this lady on television. <laughs> so that's how it started. Which is really intriguing, isn't it? Yeah. Because I think most children like drawing and painting and, and, you know, sticking some paint on stuff. But there's a big difference, frankly, <laughs> between that and having a an exhibition on the New Walk. Yeah, um, it's not come easily. I've got to say... Um, a lot of people have said to me, artists can't make a living out of being an artist. You can't do it. So it was more like a challenge to me. People saying you can't do it, you can't do it. But it took years of hard work to actually have a solo exhibition up till now at New York Museum. But it took years of hard work, but it's worked really well, yeah. How does the, how does the process come I in? Did you go to college to do art? Or? Yeah, well, how it worked was um, I was a lot of in and out of jobs. Um, I first studied, did my art, did my BA in art and design, um, did loads of other jobs, was at HSBC, financial banking, I worked at government jobs, Leicester Crown Court, because people were saying to me, you can't make a living out of art, your degree was a complete waste of time. Um, went travelling, started to decide, I'm going to be a bit of a rebel here, <laughs> I'm going to start to travel Good everywhere. So I started travelling and approached in Indonesia and seeing these poor people who were actually selling their art and making a living out of it. Feeling so touched and inspired by it, I thought, what am I really doing? I feel so frustrated. No life path is getting to what I want to do. So maybe art is what I really should do. So I challenged myself, and here I am. So when you were, you know, working at the Crown Court and, and doing all those jobs, were you, were you painting and sculpting at the same time? Yes, I was. Um, but kind of hiding my artwork. I didn't want people to see what I was doing. Why? I was too scared, I think. People would say to me, why are you doing it? I do drawings, do them in a book. And not even my brothers or my sisters or anyone in my family, I'd just hide it. Maybe my mum would see him and think, oh, that's really nice. That's lovely what you've done. But it was hiding it. I the don't know. say that, though, don't they? Yeah. It's, it's not quite the same, is it? <laughs> it's not the same. But I think um, just hiding it and feeling like I shouldn't be doing this. I think maybe how I was brought up. And then I think rebelling and then finally deciding, no, I need to do something. Um, so after I got, got married, it was Indonesia, I had a beach wedding with my husband, and he right. was the one who said to me, these are fantastic, you really need to do something with these. And then here I am, and I think if it weren't because of him, and it wasn't because of my mum also, they both give me such a lifelong support, and I don't think I will be here, because you can't do it on your own. So from your husband on that dreamy beach scene, you know, <laughs> we can picture it, can't we? Oh, it's lovely. From him saying, you know, follow your dreams. Yeah. You know, frankly, you, you arrive back at Heathrow and it's <laughs> raining and, and those dreams disappear. So what gave you that, that determination to actually go, you know what, I'm going to do this? I um, I think it was... Let me look back now. Oh, what a question. <laughs> I think I just mm -hmm. um, decided to start to do my artwork seriously, start to create them in formats, getting advice from people that I need to do it in on properly, on canvas, get proper paint, start creating really good quality work where you can show other, like, buyers who are interested in art, just take it seriously and do it. So I don't know if that was the point. I came back and all the lovey-dovey, like, when you get married, oh, it's all gone over now. But it was, like, reality. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> a reality. cheery thing. <laughs>
<laughs> so, uh, I mean, so you, you I, mean, I just think this is, it, it, as you say, you know, you, you've gone through this whole process. It's something that's been gnawing away at you for ages. Yeah. Then how long ago did you start to take this really seriously? Okay, I took it seriously the end of 2010. And yeah. between then, sort of 18 months, two years yeah. away, and you've now got a solo exhibition at the exactly. New York Museum. <laughs> I'm solo. a bit surprised myself, actually. Wow. So it was hard work. Um, but I think it took years. You kind of like in a, you kind of like in a battle. You're arguing with yourself. Can I really do this? Can I not do it? You've got so many people that are very negative around you. I'm surrounded by so many negative people. I, I have to motivate myself. I have to say I can do this. I'm so glad that I'm quite a self-motivated person. I have a really great dear friend, John Woods, who's a 90-year-old artist who's been so brilliant and insp you know, inspiring me, motivating me. I even see him. Actually, I think I'm going to go and see him on Saturday, actually. And he's helped me so much through every stage of the process, saying, don't be ashamed about what you do. You should be, you know, you should be proud of what you do. And... Another thing I have to say is artists, we are taught to, we have to draw a specific thing visually. There's a house, draw it, that's how it should be. That's not how I create art. My art is really based on feelings and emotions. We'll talk about what your art looks like in a, in a second or two, because I think, uh, it, I mean, I've got a selection of it in front of me now, and it's like sitting in front of a light box. Yeah. But we'll, we'll talk more about that in a second or two, but... The, you know that you, you describe the jobs that you were doing for all of those years, having mm. having gone down the artistic route and then being told that you, it's just a waste of your time. You shouldn't mm. you shouldn't try to do it. Those jobs were very sober jobs, weren't they? Mm. You know, I, and I'm really struck by that. There were the, the court and it was yeah. kind of government jobs, and they were big, important, sober jobs. Kind of what you know, arguably maybe parents aspire for their children. So when you then announce, actually, I'm going to give all of that up, mm. and I'm going to let my artistic side come out, and I'm going to try to earn a living painting. How did that mm. all go down? I think a bit of a shock. Thinking, is she being a rebel again? Is she in a phase? What is wrong with her? She'll it'll soon die out. But then I think it was there. But my mom at that stage actually really did say, well, if that's what you really want to do. That's what you should do. Just go with your heart, what you want to do. And that's what I've done ever since. I think people don't go on. If they've got a lifelong journey or something they want to do, they don't do it. And then later on, they look back and regret it. That's not what I've done. I've got no regrets whatsoever. And I just think you need to do it. But the thing with art is, of course, that it does come from inside somewhere, doesn't it? Mm. So there you are. You've hidden art from even your closest family for years. Mm. You then start to paint as you say in, in great quality paints and on you know the, the appropriate materials and stuff but you then have to put those out to other people to see now that's the mm. it's an intensely private thing so what what did that feel like when you first you know those first finished canvases and people are, you know at that point they can criticize can't they yeah it's a bit like someone saying go and stand out there naked and go forward <laughs> you kind of bear it all. not if you don't mind <laughs> you're kind of like bearing it all and it's like, oh, no, can I do this? I remember saying to Greg, I can't do this. My husband, I'm not going to be able to do it. You know what? I'm just going to leave it and forget it. What's the point? He's like, no, you have to. Give it a chance, take a risk and take it from there. It was scary. It was fearful, scared of what people are going to say, criticise it. And I did, I did have a lot of criticism when people did see my paintings, to be honest. Good, good or bad criticism? Bad criticism, mainly. Uh, constructive? <laughs> no, it was like, I've had very... Um, a lot of like um, other artists saying, oh, I can't believe that. And who would want to buy that? Why are you really doing that? Oh, no, what a waste of time. So I had a lot of bad criticism given to me. Did that change your way, the way you painted? It made me more stronger to say, if that's how they feel, I'm going to challenge that and I want to do better. But it was really upsetting. I think quite emotionally, it's quite very upsetting for someone to say that. How does this? I mean, how does this all go down in the Asian community? Do they buy your art? Um, let me think. Actually, now you've mentioned it. I don't think I've actually got an Asian client who's bought my Why? art. Something I must work on. Why do you think that would be? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's a bit too bright. What do you think? <laughs> well, I don't think. I mean, you see, I don't think. I mean, there's one here I'm looking at at the moment it's called Extreme Moods. It's three canvases, two yeah. um, squares, and a, and, a, and a square that's about, what, an eighth the size of the other ones yes. in a line. 
It's uh, colours from everything from the deepest sunset reds and oranges, blues, yellows. I mean, that's to me. If that was in a in a room that you wanted to cheer up and make a big impact, well, that's it in a package, isn't it? Yes. So I'm not sure. I mean, is there, who buys your art? I get people from all around the UK. Um, also in Indonesia, people buy my art um, in this little shop called Bali Shop, same name as me. Um, so I get people buy my art that like high-end, abstracty contemporary pieces. They like colourful pieces. Is that what you paint towards the high-end sort of elite stuff? No, um, it started slowly only because someone said to me, your art is very innovative. It's quite inventive. I've not seen anything like that. Um, and then it just slowly happened. Um, with art, you've got no control of how you're feeling or what's going to appear. Um, if you look at my earlier pieces, I don't think I brought anything in, but I've done, like, The Lovers, um, which is a um, a card version oh, that, I think yeah. I bought, yes. Very Picasso-style, people would say it is. So well, Henry, I would have said, to me, that looks yeah. like a sculptural piece, almost more about, like a sort of yeah. Henry Moore. And I have done a sculptural piece of that, just well. a little sculpture of that. People um, quite um, criticised that, but otherwise it was like Marmite, they loved it or they hated it. But... Um, I really like that. You see, I find that really strange that other artists would criticise... Uh, because the whole point of art is it's about... It's like freedom of speech, mm. isn't it? And it's about an expression of your of, of the way your exactly. mind ticks. So the, the, surely there's no right or wrong. You might criticise and say maybe that technique could be better. Mm. Maybe the way you apply the yes. paint could be better. I don't know. But, but to just say it's wrong seems to me so odd. Because I think they found... Um, they say to me, um, if you look at my paintings, you can't see anything recognisable. Do you see how I mean? It's an object. You can see objects in the painting, but it's not a house. It's not an abstract landscape where you can almost figure out there's an abstract, you know, there's a landscape going on there. Um, so people tend to see, what is that? Why have you done that? And the reason I've done it is it goes back to when you listen to any kind of music. When I listen to classical music, I feel the emotion of the music playing. So I let the music do its painting. I have no control of what's happening. People can plan, 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 plan as much as I like. But me, with too much planning, I have to go with my emotion. And what I create in a painting is so unpredictable, sometimes I don't know how it's going to go. With... I mean, that's with painting, I can understand how that would work. But if you are sculpting a piece, you know, you've, you've, you've got to make some plans, haven't you? Otherwise, yes, with sculpting, you're just going to yes. end up with some rubble. Yeah, with sculpting, yeah. When I did the figures, obviously, you have to do your planning carefully. You have to build it, because I did a lot of, like, nude figures. I did a lot of sculptures out of buff clay. Um, so I felt doing that, like you said, yeah, it took a lot of time. You had to plan it. I enjoyed it. But felt like I wasn't creating, I wasn't going to my full potential. And um, how do I explain that? I felt something was missing. But whereas if I get a paintbrush and I have the music playing and I've got a big canvas, the bigger the better, and that, I can the, express. And, and that, that, that business about music is interesting as well because that's, that's something that, that's relatively recent, That this passion for classical music. Mm. Does it matter what piece it is. I mean, if you're listening to, uh, you know, a, a piece of Chopin, do you yeah. do you paint in a different way than if you were listening to, I don't know, Mozart? Yes. Wow. It's on the feeling. Um, for example, Beethoven, Moonlight Sinatra, I love that piece. I listened to... Um, my husband would maybe just do a CD and say, here, and I'll say to him, tell me who the artists are on there, the composers, or don't tell me. And I just listen to it, and I feel it. With the music, I can feel an intensity of how aggressive a piece is with the music when it flows or how soft it is. I mean, I love today's modern music. I do love it. But with classical music, sometimes you just don't have those words. And sometimes it's so silent to just go with it and just paint. And now that, that, that your work is selling to mm. people who collect contemporary art, what does that feel like when somebody says, and, you know, frankly, shells out several hundred pounds mm. for a piece? What does that feel like? It feels really rewarding, and I feel happy that somebody, the main thing is somebody has looked at my piece of artwork, they're feeling an emotion, they're feeling a connection, and they want to buy it. And, is it the, and these are collectors of, as you said, yeah. the, wow. So that's what makes it so special. If someone sees a piece of my artwork, and they like it, they feel a connection. 
Um, I want people to have a piece of art on their blank wall. I mean, you know, we've got loads of blank walls. <laughs> Just, just have a little look. We could do with some artwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can see which one would look, or quite a lot would look nice on here. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel as if um, I want people to buy my art because I have a feeling with it. They understand it. Or they can have a different interpretation. I know what I feel and why I've done that painting. Um, but somebody else like yourself might see that painting. Oh, I'm not really connected to that, which is fine. Or you might feel or see something else when you look at my painting. And if, a, if, and if a, somebody comes to you to, to a, a, an exhibition, for example, and you have a pretty clear idea of, of the way... Um, I mean, there's one here called uh, uh, Beethoven Virus 1, for mm. example. You have a, an idea of how that felt to paint it and what you think that represents. If they then come to you and say, oh, no, 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 that, that to me makes me feel this way or I can sort of see something mm. completely different in it. Does it bother you that maybe somebody uh, who wasn't involved in the creation of it sees something completely different in it? No, because um, I've created my art to how I'm feeling. And if somebody sees a painting, that's kind of like their opinion or view, their view of what they see. I don't like to disclose everything when I'm in the paint. I paint it, but sometimes it's so private to me, a private emotion. I don't want to tell people really what it's all about. I want, like, I want the people, like the viewer, yourself or other people who look at my art, to say how they feel. And if they say they're looking at that, oh, actually, I don't really understand. I, I didn't feel that. I feel something else. That's good. That's what art is. Art has no rule. I feel art is a freedom of expression. So in, we shouldn't have no rules to anything. Make the rules how you want. Well, it's lovely to talk to you this afternoon. It's absolutely, I just love it. It's fantastic. It's fascinating. We will talk more after the headlines as well. Um, so uh, I should have I should have armed you with a paintbrush and you could have painted the walls. Once oh, I'm actually quite inspired here now. <laughs> That's horrified the boss, isn't it? Uh, uh, Barley, it's great to see you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll Thank chat you. more in, again in a couple of minutes' time here on BBC Radio Leicester. It's Ben Jackson with you here until 6 here till six on BBC Radio Leicester and in depth this afternoon I'm talking to Bali Sanger Jenkins who is an artist uh, she has a, an exhibition at the New York Museum um, starting shortly uh, and we're chatting to her um, for the next ten minutes or so uh, I'm, uh, whilst we We've been talking over the last few minutes ago. We've been talking about you know how people connect to art and the, about the emotion of art. But how do you feel and how do you find being an artist in in Leicester and Leicestershire? What's our kind of culture of, of art like here? Well, to be honest with you, I just think we really need to up it a bit. Mind me saying with the art, art galleries, we really need to push it a bit more. I feel as if um, people are not doing enough here. They need to do more. We've got New Walk um, Museum and Art Gallery. Um, apart from that, what else do we have? Why do we moment? Why do we fail at that then? I mean, if you think about Nottingham and its contemporary art, mm. art gallery, just, you know, whatever it is, 30 miles up the road, why? And there's been a saga about that. We're going to have one, we're not going to have one. Mm. It's not worth doing. We should be spending money on other things. Why don't we kind of embrace it? I think people don't take art seriously. They just think it's just a piece of art on the wall or they just don't take it seriously i think people here yeah. they don't other places do either they've got the funding they've got the money to do it maybe less so lax that um we need someone to really do do something about it actually so like, what does that mean to you as an art as a, as a leicester artist another leicester artist does that mean that you move away or that you only you know exhibit in london or birmingham or nottingham i feel um that yeah that's how i feel i feel as i have to go outside of leicester I mean, obviously, I've got other exhibitions coming up, Y Theatre, Little Theatre. Through hard work, I finally got to exhibit that and New York Museum. But I feel other places, I have to go outside unless I have to look what's out there because there isn't enough here. I think it's sad that some artists that are really good that I've seen try really hard, but they're not getting recognised for what they do. But that taps into something else you do because I know you encourage other people who are up and coming to... I guess short circuit the bit you went through of umpteen years where you were hiding your art. You, what you're trying to do is encourage young young people to actually follow their heart a bit. Just tell us a bit about that. Yeah, um, I try to um, try my hardest to be there for other artists. Um, I've done like a group on Facebook, which I encourage people to go on there and um, have their views on it, and also. Um, I'd be there for other artists. For example, I've got another um, event that I'm creating, organising for MS, multiple cirrhosis. So I've got, I've done it as a free event for no uh, for all the artists. They don't have to put any money in whatsoever because I want them to give an opportunity for them to exhibit their art. Um, 
it's in May and it's going to be big um, paintings that they paint on um, wood and it's going to be displayed on Sumo Bar building, if you know that in Leicester. Mm -hmm. So actually on the exterior wall building, that's a free event. And I hear people saying, you could have charged the artists for that. You could have made a bit of profit for that. Yeah, I could have. But look at the poor artists, give them a chance too. I know how they feel. Because so. I know that the, 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 the part of the uh, of the uh, proceeds from each picture that you sell, you also give to charity. Yes, that's so important to me. I've been brought up ever since I was young. My mum says, whatever you do, give something back to charity. Do something for the goodness of your heart, only if you want to. Um, I've been always brought up to do good things for charity, um, like NSPCC, Rainbows. I just donated um, a painting to Rainbows Charity. It was a big, massive wall memorial of hot air balloons. Just to see, um, it was Jennifer Leach that actually saw the painting and she's put it up on the wall there. She was absolutely happy with it. She goes, we're so delight, delight, um, delighted that you've done this. And the reason I did it is because it's telling me ill children that are there. Mm. What, what are their family going to come in when they look on the wall? Isn't it nice for them to see something that's going to make them feel happy? So I just thought, oh, I just need to give it. And I've got to tell you, just before I did donate the painting, I had probably about four people saying to me that they wanted to buy it. And I actually said no and said, no, it's, I'm actually going to give it to Rainbow's Charity. No. How did you survive all those years putting on a sober business suit every day and going to the Crown Court or wherever? I mean, it's, it's, it's patently obvious talking to you how passionate you are about how art. How did you hide it for that long? Oh, it was absolutely frustrating. Um, I'll go into um, when I worked for the Crown Court. It was a very mundane job, the same thing, very basic. It was really hard. Um, it was like counting the hours till the day had finished, thinking I just want to go home and do some art. I just want to do some art. I want to do some... It was really frustrating. Even my closest friends um, that I worked with, it was a lovely place. The people were lovely, but I just, just couldn't even tell them. And they look back at me now and say to me, I didn't know you did all this. Why did you say What did, did that do it? to you, though? I mean, that, if you're hiding something that makes you tick, how, what does it do to you as a person? It's kind of self-destructing, quite down. It's quite um, sad. It's quite lonely, frustrating. Hiding, be, you know, hiding this. Why, why am I doing this? Why am I self-torturing myself? Yeah, so it's quite sad. <laughs> So now, two years down the road, and as you say, in effect, you are running around naked in the city centre. I mean, that's what it, you know, you said earlier on that that's about what it feels like to give your art out like this. You're helping yeah. other young artists come mm. through and you're helping them to get exhibited for the first time. Mm. What's the next stage for you? What I've done is um, I want to continue. My main important thing is to continue supporting these charities. Um, I feel as if Rainbow's NSPCC, Great Ormond Street, that I give um, a percentage of myself to, I want to do more. Um, the more money I make, the more I'm going to give money to them. That's my main purpose. Um, I want to continue um, moving on, doing other exhibitions, London, um, even more worldwide as I can. Um, I've always also started creating um, my quirky car collection. I don't know if I've seen anything there. <coughs> I don't think I've got a photograph of that. That sounds. What, you what see are they? the present that I've given you as a card. Yes. The BBC Radio Leicester. Shame no one can see it. Oh, let me see. How many find it? Let me find it. Let me find it. Ah, oh, love it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So that they're like um, fuzzy felt letters. Yes, I've got more in there, but I don't want to rustle the bag here. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, BBC Radio Leicester. So it's things like um, wow. like positive quotes I have put on there, like be happy be cute, to be smart, to be good. So it's kind of motivated. So they're my quirky card collection that I've done. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So start to do those into cards, start creating my um, paintings, which I am doing now, to limited edition prints. So again, if people can't afford the big pieces, they can buy a print version for maybe £45, <laughs> which is affordable. You said at the beginning of this that you, that you were told time and time again that as an artist you couldn't make a living. Do you make a living out of this? Yes, you can make a living out of it. But the only way you can do make a living out of it is to do what you want, be strong, be fearless that you can achieve it. You're going to be put up with criticism. You're going to have face-to-face -face -face criticism. You're going to have people that um, one minute being your best friend and next minute being your enemy. And it's like, well, okay. And people have said to me, like my mum would say, 
And I'll say, why are they saying that? Mum said, well, they've got the problem, not you. You need to carry on doing what you need to do. Um, so I think artists need to be strong-headed, have a thick skin, and know with true determination they can do that, and to be to create the art that they want to create, not what they think other people are going to like. Just do what you think and create what you want, not what others want you to do. Don't go by rules. Make your own rules. I have a feeling that's exactly what you do, do, Bali. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you this afternoon. Where can people, or rather, when can people see the exhibi exhibition? Yeah, it's uh, the New Walk Museum, the Symphony Collection, Let the Music Do the Painting. It's commencing Monday the 7th of May to the 20th of May. Um, it's going to be a limited time of two weeks only, and I'm showcasing 14 original pieces of artwork, which are all for sale, and they're starting at £400 up to £2,000. And also in the art gallery shop, you'll be able to also buy some limited edition prints. So be there, because the first people that mean me actually get them, I'm going to give some free goodies away. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not lollipops or anything. <laughs> you like making people happy, don't you? Yes, you have to be happy. And I've been happy to actually meet you also, actually. I feel really honoured. Oh, gonna come tell. on! <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. <clears throat> well, we're both honoured in that case. Barley, Thank it's lovely you. to meet you. It really is super, and congratulations. And I hope the exp uh, exhibition goes just incredibly well. Yeah, and I hope you all come also. <laughs> See you soon. All right, thank you. Bye.